All aboard Trip 19, eastbound plane for Phoenix, El Paso, Dallas, Nashville, Washington, New York, and all eastern connections is now ready for departure at 1015, gate number three. All aboard, please. Last call. Right here, sir. Oh, thanks. Adjust your safety belt, please. We're taking off in a moment. Oh, right. May I take care of this for you? I uh, know. Uh, I'll keep it, thanks. Charm of Inspector Drake still best key to hospitality. Charlie Chen, of all people, how are you? What's brought you here from Honolulu? Officer of law cannot escape long arm of same. Must attend annual police convention in New York. Ah. But how does Scotland Yard excuse your honorable absence? Well, I moved over to the intelligence department a year ago. I wanted to join my regiment, Charlie, when the war broke out. But the higher-ups thought that at my age, I was more valuable in military intelligence. Humble services at disposal of old friends. Thanks, Charlie. I may need them. That's my problem. Sabotage. Investigation has revealed satisfactory clues. Everything points to a man named Paul Narva, and we're certain he murdered an official of the British Air Ministry three years ago. Narva and his Hindu servant disappeared completely. Ever since that time, similar acts of sabotage have occurred in our colonies and now here in the United States. I'm convinced Narvo is the head of the sabotage ring operating in this country. No indication of his present whereabouts? No, but I have his photograph and fingerprints in my briefcase. Covered his tracks very carefully. I'm now following his wife, a former actress, uh, hoping that she'll lead me to him. <laughs> She's given me a merry chase. I followed her to Shanghai, where she was working in a cabaret, to Bombay, where she was a secretary, to Copenhagen, where she was an elevator girl, then back to the Orient and across to San Francisco. I've just received information which leads me to believe that she's in New York. It was like finding a needle in a haystack. Needle can be found when correct thread located. Charlie, I've got to find that thread. British tenacity with Chinese patience like Royal Flush in poker game. Unbeatable. to New York, Charlie. It's a business of place. What's the case this time? Are you two working together, Mr. Drake? Well, how do you do, Mr. Chan? I'm Inspector Vance. The chief sent me down to welcome you. Most grateful. Very glad to see you again, Mr. Drake. Hi, Vance. Oh, cut it out now, boys. You can get all the photos you want at the convention. Drake, <laughs> why, it's good to oh, see you, Kirby. Meet my friend, Mr. Chan. Not the Mr. Chan. Well, this is a pleasure, sir. And Inspector Vance. How do you do? Drop into the convention if you get a chance. Yeah, very kind of. Frank is going to stay at my place. I'm giving a dinner for him tonight. Won't you join us? Oh, I don't think you'll be able to do that. The chief's throwing a banquet. And he'd be pretty disappointed if he didn't show up. Ah, oh, that's too bad. I rather counted on having some news for you later on. Perhaps could leave banquet before after dinner speech is completed. <laughs> oh, I wish I could get out of it. Drop in if you can get away. It's the Courtney Arms Apartments on East 67th Street. I'll appreciate seeing you there. Well, goodbye, then. Good luck in search for thread. <laughs> the car's over here, Charlie. Mr. Drake no longer with Scotland Yard. Yes, I know. He's now with the military intelligence. This police car is yours as long as you stay in New York. Pop! Hey, Pop! Pop! Gosh, I, I almost missed you. What are you doing in New York? Got stuck in a crosstown traffic jam. Please, please, answer question. Why are you in New York instead of Los Angeles? Well, my roommate at college was driving east, and he asked me to come along to see the World's Fair. Without permission of humble parent? I read in the paper that he'd be here for the police convention. I knew I could ask him then. Is it all right? Inspector Vance, this is favorite offspring Jimmy. 
without whose assistance many cases would have been solved much sooner. <laughs> Why don't you take him to the banquet with you tonight, Mr. Chan? Say, that'd be great. Good. I have my ticket. I didn't want to go anyhow. Boy, the chief certainly was swell to us tonight. What are you going to do with all your collection of keys to cities? No good as doorstops. Perhaps make excellent teething rings for future grandchildren. Why did we have to leave the banquet so early? Must call on old friend Hugh Drake, formerly of Scotland Yard, for a business check. You mean you're working on the case already? Gee, then it's a good thing I came here, isn't it? Glad you could come, Mr. Chan. Took liberty of bringing number two son. Fine. Mr. Drake is waiting for you in the library. Thank you. Said he wanted to see you as soon as you arrived. <laughs> well, he must have fallen asleep. Drake. Drake, wake up. Here's your friend Chan. Drake. Mr. Drake dead? Dead? What? Drake. Poor fellow, must have been a heart attack. Did he complain of illness? On the contrary, he was in fine spirits at the dinner party. Can you explain why he leave guests? I turned the library over to him as an office. About nine o'clock, he said he had some work to do and just excused himself. Mr. Drake did not leave library? Not that I know of. Curious. Canary bird also dead. That's strange. Canary, unlike faithful dog, do not die for sympathy. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Coincidence, like ancient egg, leave unpleasant odor. Number two son, student of chemistry, can identify strange scent? Gee, Bob, it smells like tetragene. It's a new gas discovered only a few months ago. Description, please. Well, it kills with one whiff, and then evaporates quickly, leaving a slight harmless scent. It's been put up in a glass pellet form. If what he says is true, Drake was murdered. Conclusion correct. But how could anyone get in here? He must have come in through the window. Contradiction, please. Observe. Latch closed. Indicate inside job. You mean that... Killer enter through door. Suggest you hold all guests. Must telephone Inspector Vance. Is that so? Okay, Carla. Thanks. The autopsy shows gas in both lungs. Tetragene? Yeah, tetragene. Here are the fingerprints of the guests and servants. Check this set with the prints you get on the desk. Yes. Mr. Drake, have you sub safe? Yes. Will open, please? Certainly. Check these. These belong to Mr. Drake. Passport. Traveler's checks. Cash? What's this? It's a guest card of the British Imperial Club. I got it for him. No indication of briefcase? No. What briefcase? Mr. Drake carry briefcase on plane. Contain important evidence. I know, Pop. The guy that removed Drake also removed the briefcase. What do you think, Charlie? It's possible. Well, Inspector Vance. 
The fingerprints of the guests don't match the ones that we found on the desk. Well, let's see what your guests have to say for themselves. Very well. well let me give you a light, anyhow. Who would murder him? I don't know. Was he really murdered, Inspector? Well, what have you found out? Was it a hot happened, George? We've compared the fingerprints and they don't match with any of yours. That's a relief. Then we may go. Not so fast. I'll have to ask you all some questions. Joe. Yes, Inspector. Your name, please. Herbert Fenton. Oh, this is absurd. Fantastic. English, eh? Huh? Is that an offense? Herbert, please. He's not accusing you of anything. I can't stand this confounded questioning. It's ridiculous. You knew Dreg? Well, of course I knew him. We were at Oxford together. I haven't seen him for years until tonight. Poor fellow. Inspector. The butler says he has a lot of work to do in the kitchen. Is it okay? Yeah. But first, I'd like to have a little talk with him. What's your name? Uh, Boggs, sir. Uh, Robert Boggs. Boggs has been in my employ for three years. I can vouch for him. And a very good butler, too. Uh, thank you, sir. Did you see anyone enter the library after Drake went in? Uh, no, sir. Mr. Kirby sent me on an errand uh, after dinner, sir. That's correct. I found I was out of liquor and I sent him to the club. Uh, the extra boy here served the guests whilst I was away, sir. Let's have a talk with him. I dismissed him just after Boggs returned. That was a desk? Uh, yes, sir. It's, uh... Give it to him. Pat, pick him up and bring him here. Yes, sir. Please, did Mr. Drake request presence of any of your guests? Why, yes. Besides Mr. Fenton, he asked me to invite Miss Preston. Recognize Miss Preston as most excellent actress. Yes, she is. And he also asked me to invite Mr. Percy, who is chief designer at the Metropolitan Aircraft Corporation, of which I am president. The only reason why Drake wanted to see you? Only that I believe he was investigating sabotage. Did you talk about that? No. May I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. Bomber crashed yesterday at your plant? Yes, unfortunately. Probably some more of that fifth column work. This is Keith Jeffrey, stockbroker. Today at lunch he told me he read that Drake was staying with me. Yes, I heard a good deal about him on the other side and I was anxious to make his acquaintance. Mr. Kirby was kind enough to invite me to dinner. Then this evening was the first time you've ever seen Drake. That's right. Then only leave Miss Preston. Uh, Miss Preston. Yes? Was there any special reason why Mr. Drake wanted to see you? Not that I know of. Never heard of him until tonight. Did you talk with him this evening? He sat next to me at dinner, but uh, didn't say anything of particular interest. Well, it seems that's all she can tell us. May I help, please? That's very kind of you. Miss Preston played engagement in Honolulu last season. Why, yes. I stopped off on my way to Australia. Very beautiful lavalier. Thank you. Too bad. One pearl missing. What? That's strange. I didn't notice it when I put it on tonight. Exhausted. I wonder how much longer they're going to keep us here. Drake probably died a natural death. This inspector's trying to make a mystery of it. It's the only way he can keep his job. The market's been very sluggish lately, but I think I'll have some interesting news to you shortly. But I do, I'll let you both know about it. Did any of the guests leave this room after Drake went to the library? I couldn't say. Anybody could have gone out of the room. Well, I didn't. Well, I didn't either. Hey, Pop! Here's your oh, criminal. I caught him opening this cablegram. Oh. It was Drake from Scotland Yard. Acknowledge inquiry regarding Robert Boggs. We'll forward information immediately. The kid's right. Drake must have suspected Boggs and cabled the yard. Boggs found it out and killed him. I didn't. I had nothing to do with it. Can you explain tampering with cablegram? Mr. Drake thought he'd seen me somewhere before and questioned me. I was arrested in England for a crime I didn't commit. When that cable came for Mr. Drake, I was afraid it was about me. Take him to headquarters for further questioning. Well, I guess I won't need your guests any longer. Let me have your addresses and phone numbers before you go. Well, that's a I hope I have the pleasure of seeing you again, Mrs. Fenton. Oh, I hope so. We must meet. I haven't anything to write my address on. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Inspector, will you a piece of papers I'm going to write on? 
Ah, may I? Thank you. Here you are, Inspector. Good night, Mr. Chen. Good night. You can get in touch with me at the plant, Inspector. There you are. I told you it was ridiculous asking all those questions. I only wrote down my office address, Inspector. Is that all right? It'll be okay. Good night, George. Thank you. I'll have to ask you not to leave the city. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, Charlie, looks like a cut and dried case. Say, Pop, I spotted that butler right off the bat. Didn't let him out of my sight. You're all right, kid. Number two son, very promising detective. Promise very much. Produce very little. Inspector <laughs> Bear. Stop pushing me. Come on, come on. Uh, no. Here he is, the extra boy. What do you want with me? I ain't done nothing. Get Nobody. Him Get him in. Nobody. I... Make me up here. Get his fingerprints. I ain't no criminal, mister. Pipe down. You saved the gas when Boggs was out, didn't you? Yes, sir, but I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing about nothing, sir. I was completely in the dark. Condition appear contagious. Did you see any of them go to the library? No, sir. No one went in. Mr. Drake didn't want to be disturbed. How did you know that? He told me that when I brought a visitor to see him. Visitor? What visitor? Well, a young man showed up here and said he had to see Mr. Drake urgent, and I showed him right on in. Young man, give name? Yes, sir. Mr. David Elliott. Hmm. You never told us anything about this. I don't know David Elliott. Hmm. Say, Pop, what do you think about this? Thought at present like dog chasing on tail, getting no place. Van speaking. Check up on a young man named David Elliott. Here's his description. What did he look like? Well, he was slim and tall and dark, rather dark. And when Drake learned why I came, he insisted on seeing you right away. I told him you had nothing to do with the murder of that British air official. What did he say to that? It's your husband, Paul Narva, he's after, and he's sure you know where he is. Well, I don't. I know that, but Drake doesn't believe it. And he swears he'll never let up until he finds you. Well, he'll trail you and catch me. Can't you see? There's nothing left for me to do but go away at once. Look, Pat, I'm in love with you, and I'll never let you run away again. Listen, there's only one thing left to do. You've got to see Drake tomorrow and tell him everything. Oh, no, David, I'm afraid to do that. There's nothing to be afraid of. You're innocent, and we'll prove it. <sighs> Most of the Elliots we checked on are older men, but the one that comes nearest the description you gave me is 28 years old, six feet tall, black hair, and... Uh... Sounds like the Elliot we're after. What's his business? Chemical research? I got it. Elliot is really Narvo. He made the pellet that killed Drake. And Mr. Kirby's butler is working for him. What's his address? No, I'll take care of it myself. Well, looks like the kid's right again, Charlie. It's the easiest nut I ever cracked. Not easy to crack, often empty. <laughs> Your dad's right, Jimmy. I've been on many a job that's looked easy, and then taken months to solve. Oh, say, Charlie. Do you mind sticking around for a while and giving me a hand, just in case? Mr. Drake, very old friend. Most happy to lend assistance. I'll pick up Elliot and let you know how I make out. Oh, uh, when will I call you? Why don't you wait here for Inspector Vance's call, Mr. Chan? I also would like to hear the results. Okay. I'll phone you here. May I use pen and ink, please? Of course. Help yourself. Thank you. Must send cablegram to honorable spouse. May be detained in New York. Don't forget to tell mom that I'm helping you and give her my love. Will inform honorable mother that aid from number two son like interest on mortgage. Impossible to escape. How did that get in there? Already observed pearl missing from lavalier worn by Miss Preston. Then she must have been in this room with Drake. I didn't know she came in here to see him. She's hiding something. I'll bet she's in on it too. Have Miss Preston's address? Yes, Roxbury House in Sutton Place. Come on, Pop, let's get going. Number two, son, get going to bed. Oh, but I'm not tired. Fresh weed better than wilted rose. We'll need alert brain tomorrow. When Inspector Vance call, please inform him we'll meet him at office. I will.
Who is it? Mr. Chan. Well, won't you come in, Mr. Chan? Humbly apologize for late intrusion. Well, that's quite all right. Please sit down. Thank you so much. Most charming apartment. Thank you. Can only stay a moment. Have found missing pearl? Why, no. May I see Lavalier? Certainly. I think you may have pleasant surprise. Why, that's very kind of you, Mr. Chan, to go to all this trouble. Where did you find it? Mr. Kirby's library. Library? Why, how did it get there? Person who asked riddles should know answer. It's a mystery to me. Perhaps prefer to discuss mystery directly with police? No. I was in the library, but I had nothing to do with the murder. Mr. Drake asked about a girl who played in a show with me in London five years ago. He wanted to know if I'd seen her in New York. I told him I hadn't. You were concealing truth? Mr. Chan, she's a very good friend of mine, and I didn't want to give her away. She's had so much trouble already, and I'm certain she's innocent. If friend is innocent, can trust humble self to help prove same. Will give name, please? Patricia West. She lives in a rooming house at 21 Washington Square. 21 Washington Square. Thank you. Mr. Chan, you will help her, won't you? We'll do humble best. Good night, Mr. Chan. Good night. Thank you so much. Oh. Loyal friend believes humble self can be of service. Won't you come in? Thank you. I am Lieutenant Chan of Honolulu Police. Please. Oh, what do you want with me? Mr. Drake was murdered tonight. Murdered? I, you think I had something to do with it? No. Merely wish to ask whereabouts of Paul Narvo. I don't know Paul Narvo. You were married to him. You leave London with him after murder of government official. Please, would like to be your friend. Happy solution, never see light if truth kept in dark. Won't you please confide in me? Where you first meet Mr. Narvo? London. I was working in a show. Yes? He was very charming, knew the best people, took me every place, and, well, I was swept off my feet, and we were married. You remain in show? No, he made me give it up. Nothing was too good for me. Jewelry, beautiful flat in Berkeley Square, maids, valets, all that sort of thing. One night, a few weeks later, he came home and was very excited and told me we had to leave immediately for India on urgent business. He revealed nature of business? No, but he seemed unusually interested in aviation. So? was always inviting airplane men to parties. Then one day in Calcutta, his Hindu servant, Ramula, arrived. Same servant you have in London? Yes. Late that night, I heard them discussing the murder of the Air Ministry official. So? Well, I... I, I knew they were mixed up in it. Why you not inform police? Oh, I, I confronted my husband, but he threatened to kill me if I breathed a word. He kept me a prisoner for days. But I managed to escape from there, and then I wandered from one place to another. Once he almost caught me in Cape Town, where I was working as a manicurist, but I got away from there, and... Then Mr. Drake started to hound me, and now... She 
Pop. I almost got to kill her. Contradiction, please. Killer almost get you. Excuse, this is number two, son. How do you do? I'm supposed to be in bed, but I knew Papa needed some help. You follow me all evening? Yeah, I spotted some guy trailing you, so I waited until I got the goods on him. Please, disregard merchandise. Much better you identify assailant. Well, he looked like an Indian or something. Indian? Possibly mean East Indian. Hindu? Yeah, that's right, a Hindu. Ramula. Who's Ramula? Narvo's servant. Paul Narvo must be in New York. Quite possible. Must inform Inspector Vance immediately. Now, Miss West, you still insist that you haven't seen Narvo in New York? Yes. Well, we picked up a man who I'm sure is your husband. Now, this guy's fingerprints match those on the desk where Drake was found dead. But so far, he won't talk. I want you to identify him. Jack, bring Narvo in. Oh, please, Mr. Chan, I... Well? What's the matter? Surprised to see your wife? I don't know this young lady. David, what's happened? What's this all about? Darling, I've told them everything. Who is this guy? Well, his name is David Elliott. And he did go see Mr. Drake about me this evening, but he had nothing to do with the murder. Well, maybe he didn't. Well, he was the last person seen in the library with Drake. And Drake was killed with the same newfangled poison gas that we found in Elliott's lab. Maybe that Hindu sneaked into the library after Mr. Elliott left. Yeah. You dispose of poison gas to a Hindu customer recently? No. Neither to a Hindu nor anyone else. I was secretly experimenting with it as a base for a powerful explosive. Well, maybe I'm wrong about you being Narvo. But we'll have to hold you just the same. But why? Well, I've got to make sure he's telling the truth, don't I? Oh, Mr. Chan. Please, be patient. Inspector Vance only doing routine duty. Flynn. I want every Hindu in town rounded up. All the Hindus in New York? Yes, that's what I said, every Hindu. And have them all in the lineup tomorrow. All right, boys. Yeah. Will you get on your feet and get back there? Pipe down! Pipe down and get back there! You pipe down! I never knew there were so many Hindus in New York. Number two son still not recognized assailant? They're all beginning to look alike to me. Hey, Frank, how many more of these Alababas are there? That's the last bunch, Inspector. Hey, you with the raincoat. Step out. Left hand. Well, what's your racket? Racket? I do not understand, Saeed. I am Hindu Fakir. Fakir's right. My dear sir, you are laboring under a delusion. You have the honor of addressing the great Rashid, Grand Lama, the sacred cult of psychic believers. Through me, souls are cleansed. Wait a minute, buddy. We're going to start with a little cleansing of your mud. Come on, sit down. <laughs> Wait a minute, out. I'll get a heavy coffee on you, cover girl. Wait a minute, I'm a citizen. <laughs> Cut it out, will you? Well, this is Shorty McCoy, the Canarsie kid. He makes a living feeding suckers phony religion. And I can't make an honest liver no more. Get him out of here. I'll go, but this is my bread and butter. Get out. I got connections, don't forget that. I'm gonna pull a fast one, Charlie. Watch this. Ramilla, step forward. What are you guys trying to do, kid me? But Sam? All of our names are Ramula. Excuse, please. Ramula, most common Hindu name. That's the guy. You mean this one here? Yeah. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Okay, take him in my office. I am honest man, sir. I do nothing wrong. This I... is Joe, get rid of this crowd. This way. Mr. Paul, get up there. You're the guy that slugged me. Now look here, kid. Why don't you make up your mind? You just said that guy did it. Well, I thought it was him until I saw this bird. 
energetic detective seems to have as much difficulty making decision as fly in bakery shop. Well, gee, Pop, it was kind of dark, and this guy moved awful fast. This young man is mistaken. I've never seen him before. Are you positive this time? I've never been so sure of anything in all my life. All right. Take him to my office. Come on. But hold on to that other fella. This kid may change his mind again. Oh. This young fellow says you attacked him last night. That's ridiculous. Who are you and what's your business? I'm a reputable dealer in Oriental Curios. Here is my card, sir. I guess Singe. Sing. Mm. Where were you last night, Mr. Singe? I was in my shop holding an auction. Where's your shop? At 214 East Russell Street. What time was the auction over? About 11 o'clock. Any of 50 people can tell you that. Well, you seem to have a very good alibi. Anyway, it'll be easy to check on. Gosh, Pop, I guess I'm wrong again. Okay, that'll be all. I'm sorry we troubled you. Show him out and bring the other man in. Say, Pop, I must have been right the first time. Ramula! Is he dead? Yes, he's dead all right. You are all right? Yes, thank you. Please, sit down. That was quick work, Bill. I didn't have a chance to get my gun out. Murphy got him. I didn't fire. I was afraid I'd hit the kid. Well, then who shot him? Please. Shots come from outside. One kill Ramula, other intended for Mrs. Narvo. They must have come from that warehouse. See, the window's open. That's where they came from, all right. I'll have it searched. No. Gee, Pop, aren't you going to help him find the killer? Honorable police, quite capable of conducting search without humble selves. You are a very brave girl. We'll not call upon you to face other suspects tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chan. Suggest you give police protection to Mrs. Narvo. Will you please excuse me? Have earnest desire to visit East Indian Curio Shop. Good night. Good night. Gee, Bob, somebody got here ahead of us. have more authority than whole army with no ammunition. I'll never go on a case like this again without a gat. More interested to learn what mysterious visitors seek to destroy. Gee, Pop, what would a curio dealer be doing with a laboratory? Come on. Say, that's the same kind of glass pellet that the Tetra team was in. Curio shop evidently disguised for manufacture of deadly gas. Perhaps search of office will reveal formula. Look, kerosene. Gosh, if we'd have been a little later, Narva or whoever it was would have destroyed all the evidence. Did you find something, Pop? Look for other pieces. Are these the ones? Here's the formula for tetragene. I knew Romola was the one who made those pellets. This is plan of new bomber, similar to one destroyed two days ago. Just as I figured, Romola was really mixed up in this sabotage plot. Our late honorable friend, Mr. Drake, evidently on correct path. Suggest we take this evidence to Inspector Vance at once. Come. Finding that stuff at Romola's shop sure puts Elliot in the clear. No use holding him any longer. That fellow's as innocent as I am. 
Has number two son forgotten he already accused Mr. Elliot of being novel? Oh, gee, Pop, I can't be right all the time. Well, anyhow, I'll bet you Boggs is mixed up in this. I got it. Boggs is really Narvo, and Romolo was his servant. Boggs is also okay. What? This cable came from Scotland Yard tonight. Recent information proves Robert Boggs falsely convicted. This will please Kirby. He's been following me ever since we locked Boggs up, saying he was sure he was innocent. Mr. Kirby anxious to have servant released? Yes, so as soon as I got the cable, I let him go. How long since, please? Mm, about an hour ago. Say, you don't think the guy that gave this slip at Romulus could be Boggs? Anything can happen in hours time. Inspector? Inspector, there's a guy outside that's driving me nuts. Says he's got to see you right now so we can go back to work. You know I'm busy, Bill. Find out if the laboratory has a report yet and have Elliot release. Okay, but that guy gives me the will. He's talking about a briefcase I've lost to some stiff in the morgue. Bill, will you do... What? Why are you dummy? That's what we're looking for. Drake's briefcase. Where is this guy? Bring him in here. Get in. Come on, come on. Well, well? I'm Frankie O'Shaughnessy, Inspector, and I've been waiting to see you for over 34 minutes. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Well, I'm from the British Imperial Club, see? Now, I'm not English, understand. I just work there in the check room on the night shift. Never mind the details. What's this about a briefcase? Well, I'm getting to that. About 5.30 yesterday afternoon, just after I came on duty, some tall guy that I'd never seen before comes in and checks a briefcase with me. He wasn't a regular member of the club, so I asked him his name. It was Hugh Drake, so... Yeah, that's right. So I checked it for him. And boy, did I get a shock tonight when I see his picture in the paper and read that he's been murdered. So that was in the morning papers. Why didn't you contact us before? Well, I never buy a paper in the morning, because then I can read them all at night at the club for nothing. Hey, I gotta be getting back to work. Briefcase still in check room? Oh, yes, sir. I'm holding it there. Nice work, kid. Say, we didn't find a check among Drake's effects. Uh, pardon me, Inspector. Here's that report from the laboratory. Hmm. Well, the formula says it was tetragene, all right, Charlie. And the only fingerprints on those bomber plans match Romulus. Would suggest we all return with boy to British Imperial Club and examine contents of briefcase. Sure. Now it'll be easy. With Narvel's photograph and fingerprints, it'll be a cinch. All right, let's go. You stay with driver. Oh, but Pop, I want to be in on this too. Door of opportunity swing both ways. Much better you stay and watch for suspects. Okay, Pop. You can count on me. I won't let you down. Doubles again. <laughs> I certainly am lucky tonight. Say you are. Well, that's a little better. And will you accept a double? No, no, you're too lucky for me. I've never seen such dice. Got me for 120 already. Oh, come now. Just one more game. Perhaps your luck will change. I've been looking for that for the last half hour. Now, I really must get home, Fenton. I'm late now. I have an appointment with my broker. Your broker? This time of night, huh? Hot tip on the market, eh? Perhaps you'll let a fellow in on it. I will, if it's any good. <laughs> nice of you to have invited me, Mr. Fenton. You have a very beautiful club. Here it is. Boy! 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 I say boy! A uh, hat. Oh, your checks, Mr. Fenton. What? Huh? Oh, blast. What have I done, these confounded things? Oh, here they are. I want to thank you for a very pleasant evening. Well, not at all. I'm sorry Kirby couldn't come along. He's terribly upset about that awful tragedy of Drake's murder, you know. Yes, I know. I hope they solve it soon. Well, if you ask my opinion, it'll take a smarter man than that stupid inspector. Can I give you a lift? Oh, I wouldn't think of taking you out of your way. I'll call a taxi. Well, not at all. Oh, I've forgotten something. <laughs> Excuse me. Good night. Good night. Say, boy. Boy, I've forgotten something. I had a check somewhere from something I left yesterday. What the... Did... That is. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. For a minute, I thought we had something, Charlie. Wishful thinking sometimes lead to blind alley. Please. You have keys found on Drake's bunny? Hmm. Perhaps.
perhaps try a smaller key. This does it. Excuse me. I'm Mr. Kirby's butler. I've come to pick up a briefcase. Uh, thank you. Why didn't you let me grab him? Perhaps wishful thinking about to be fulfilled. And to think I had that guy sprung. Come. I saw a very suspicious looking character with a beard and a mustache. Yeah, but I'm afraid you have already missed bus. Follow that cab and don't lose it. stairs. Oh, Bart. What's the matter with the bell? I've been pressing it for several minutes without any answer. I didn't know it was out of order, sir. I'll have it attended to immediately. I have some papers here Mr. Kirby asked me to bring over. Well, he wasn't home when I left, sir. Good evening, Mr. Jeffrey. Oh, uh, good evening, gentlemen. What's this, another investigation? Maybe. Uh, merely making friendly call on Mr. Kirby. Will you come in, gentlemen, please? Say, Pop, they both got briefcases. Must compliment Sprout on keen observation. Excuse. Can explain possession of check to redeem briefcase owned by Mr. Drake? Mr. Drake? I didn't know he belonged to him. As soon as I was released tonight, I came back here to resume my duties. But Mr. Kirby wasn't here, but he left me a message asking me to go at once to the club and fetch this briefcase. The check was with the note, sir. May I see the note? Uh, yes, sir. It's over here on this table where Mr. Kirby always leaves his messages. Thank you so much. Uh, will you tell Mr. Kirby we'd like to see him? Uh, yes, sir. Will you gentlemen make yourselves comfortable in the living room? Please, may I take briefcase? Uh, yes, certainly, sir. You handled all of uh, Mr. Kirby's stock transactions, I believe. That's right. I've got Mr. Percy's account, too. As a matter of fact, I have an appointment with him at his home right now. Keeps you pretty busy, doesn't it? <laughs> it certainly does. Trying to keep ahead of the stock market these days is no joke. Uh, gentlemen, Mr. Kirby is not in the library. He's no doubt in the bedroom. I'll go and see. May I take liberty of examining papers, please? Of course. There's nothing confidential about them. This is sample of Mr. Kirby's handwriting? Yes, those are his notes. Notes supposedly written by Mr. Kirby to Butler resemble this handwriting, but close scrutiny reveals slight difference. What? Heavily crossed T's in note to Boggs, not evident in stock notations. I Jove, you're right, Mr. Chan. Kirby didn't write that. Are you positive? Absolutely. Uh, excuse me. I'm afraid Mr. Kirby is not at home. I've looked all over the apartment. Mr. Kirby asked you to meet him here? Yes, he telephoned me about 15 minutes ago. Said it was very important I get these papers here right away. Was he at home when he called you? Yes, I presume so. Well, I'm late for my other appointment now. And Mr. Kirby comes in, tell him those are the papers he wanted. Oh, Mr. Chan, if I can be of any further assistance to you, you can reach me at Mr. Percy's home. I'll be there for about an hour. Thank you. Find what we're looking for, Charlie? 
Sincerely hope so. Excellent likeness of Hindu servant Ramula. Mrs. Narvo assumed many aliases hoping to avoid husband. Well, never mind them. Let's see Narvo. Say, Pop, that guy doesn't look like anybody in this case. Do you think we're on the wrong track, Charlie? Must have patience. But if that's a photograph of Narvo, we're completely off. Narvo fingerprint. Faces may alter, but fingerprint never lie. Suggest comparison with fingerprints of all suspects. Yes, and the sooner the better. I'll give it to the driver. I'll take it for you. All right, thanks, Jimmy. Tell him, see, they get to fingerprint expert immediately. Say it's for the Drake case. Yes, sir. But don't let anything happen until I get back. Please apply same caution to self. Oh, you know you can trust me, Pop. Would you gentlemen care to have a drink while you're waiting for Mr. Kirby? Say, that's a swell idea. I'll have a rum Collins. How about you, Charlie? Nothing, thanks. Very good, sir. Oh, Bart. Hey, yes, sir. We'll make that scotch and soda. Uh, certainly, sir. Charlie. Looks like Kirby had company tonight. What the? Kirby? Dead? Deadly poison dropped into brandy. How about this one? Brandy only. Killer evidently on very friendly terms with victim. Admit number two son. Pop! Pop! Let me in! Somebody socked me on the head and stole the briefcase. What? Catch glimpse of assailant? No, just as I stepped in the elevator, he caught me. I just came to. Then they got away with our only evidence. What are we going to do now, Charlie? Have addresses of suspects given you night of Drake murder? Yeah. What are you going to do with them? Telephone. Say, that's a swell idea. You're going to call up and find out if those birds are home. Which one are you calling? Mr. Fenton, first on this. Hello. May I speak to Mr. Fenton, please? Well, wake him up. Most important. Huh? Who is it? What? Well, what is it? I've retired for the night. So sorry to disturb you, Mr. Fenton. Merely wish to ask minor question. Unimportant. Can wait until morning. Of all the confounded stupidity, calling me up in the middle of the night to tell me he can wait till the morning. Who was it, Snooky? That blasted Oriental calls himself a detective. Oh. Are you checking to see if Jeffrey does have an appointment with Percy? Hello. Lieutenant Chan calling Mr. Percy. Oh, Mr. Chan. Uh, this is Jeffrey speaking. Uh, uh, by the way, has uh, Kirby shown up yet? Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Jeffrey. Uh, he is here. Uh, may I speak with Mr. Percy, please? Why, certainly. Oh, Ralph, Mr. Chan wants to speak to you. He's at Kirby's place. Yes, Mr. Chan, what can I do for you? I'm at your disposal any time but tomorrow morning. We're testing a new bomber at 10 o'clock, TR-4. Maybe you'd like to see it. Most interested. 
could extend invitation to other friends? Why don't you ask Mr. Kirby? I'm sure it'll be all right. He invited all the guests who attended the dinner he gave for Mr. Drake the other night. Thank you so much. We'll be pleased to see you at airport. And good night. Think it wise to withhold news of Kirby's death until later. Yes, but we're not getting anywhere. Fenton's at home. Jeffrey's with Percy. Who are you calling now? Mr. Elliot, who does not answer ring of telephone. We'll call on Mr. Elliot tonight. Perhaps Mr. Boggs like to witness test flight of bomber plane tomorrow. Oh. Why, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Please make certain all suspects at Metropolitan Airport tomorrow. What are we going to do? Have a family picnic? Very good idea. Perhaps locate bad egg in picnic basket. Are you going to have it ready to go out in the morning? Yeah. Just got a couple of things to check on the inside and she'll be all set. Boss expecting a lot from this gentleman. He won't be disappointed. See you in the morning. Want a better place for that? This worked before. It can't fall off the ledge while the ship's level are climbing. But when it goes into a dive, it'll roll off and smash, see? That's a fine job you've got there. Splendid. Thank you. I hope she performs as well as she looks. Well, I don't know what's holding them up. Well, there's a car coming now. Good morning, Mr. Chan. Where's Mr. Kirby? Mr. Kirby will be delayed. Request you take charge and proceed without him. Oh, so sorry. Uh, Miss West, this is Mr. Percy. Designer of bomber TR-4. How do you do, Miss West? How do you do? Oh, believe you have not met everyone. Please. Pat, what are you doing here? Uh, Miss West, also interested in witnessing test flight. Uh, Mr. Fenton. Miss West, may I present Mr. Fenton? I'm delighted to meet you, Miss West. How do you do? I would like to know what's so important that you had to call me in the middle of the night. So sorry. But important events like insistent alarm clock demand attention. We'll explain soon. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey. Miss West, uh, Mr. Jeffrey. I'm glad to meet you. How do you do? How would you people like to see what the interior of a bomber looks like? Oh, that's a splendid idea. Would you mind if I went along too, sir? Not at all. Glad to have you. Thank you, sir. Come this way. I'm coming too, Mr. Percy. Who's the man with the derby? Mr. Kirby's butler. Name is Boggs. Oh. Did you spot your husband? No. None of them resemble Paul. Charlie, I told you this was a wild goose chase. You did not recognize anything? Voice? Mannerism, perhaps? No, I'm sorry. I'd certainly know him if I saw him. I easily deceived. Same leopard can hide beneath different spots. I don't know why you're so sure one of these guys is Narvo. May be mistaken, but all facts point to that conclusion. Please remain with Mrs. Narvo. Have urgent desire to inspect Palmer. I don't get it. Doesn't seem to be working, Mr. Percy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll have to ask you not to play with those dials. It's a very delicate instrument. Please keep hands in pockets. Own pockets. Hi, <laughs> Joe Brown. The equipment's magnificent. Yes, there seems to be everything here but the kitchen stove. Kitchen stove, most excellent weapon. Good for cooking goose. <laughs> After all, I thought this was a fighting machine. Where are the bombs, torpedoes, death-dealing devices, and all that sort of thing? Sorry, Mr. Fenton. These planes are never armed until after the test flight. The mountings for the guns are installed, however. Sorry, I'll have to ask you not to smoke here. 
Is the bomb release control up here? No, and like the speed of these ships, that cannot be disclosed. There's so many secret agents operating these days, we can't be too careful. Do you really believe that sabotage was responsible for the crash of the TR-3 the other day? Well, from all indications, it would appear so. However, we can't be too sure. Excuse me, please. Uh, gentlemen, this is Lieutenant Cooper, our uh, test pilot. Oh, how, how do you do? do? Hiya. Sure got to hand it to you fellas, risking your necks this way. Oh, you're doing it for bread and butter. You don't think much about it, Sonny. Anything to make a living, huh? Oh, Mr. Kirby said he just wanted a preliminary test this morning. That's right. I take her up to about 15,000 feet before you dive. 15,000 feet? That's almost three miles. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Percy. Boy, I'm glad I'm not going up with you. Well, I guess if we've got enough of these planes, there won't be anything to worry about from the rest of the world. Should they flame now? Oh, there's plenty of time. They're just warming up the motors. However, I'll make sure. to see us alive, Mr. Fenton. Gallant merely contain harmless substitute supplied by chemist, Mr. Elliot, at my request. Have you got a room where I can question this guy, Fenton? Yeah, she can use my office. Okay, Charlie, bring the rest of them over. Come on. Well, it certainly worked all right. I was beginning to think he wasn't going to give himself away. Desire to live, still strongest instinct in man. Nice work, Pop. Just a moment, Mr. Chan. You mean to say you planted that pellet in the plane? Trick sometimes necessary in order to trap criminal. Stolen plans of TR-4 led to search of bomber last night, revealing presence of deadly pellet. So you thought you were clever, huh? Say, listen, buddy, I spotted you from the time I saw you in Kirby's apartment at the party for Drake. You arrest two mechanics employed by Fenton to sabotage planes? Yeah, we got them all right. 
Here they come now. Say, one of those guys was sent by Fenton to take the briefcase away from Barks. Yeah, that's right. This one here. Take him down to headquarters. Come on. But, Pop, how'd you get on to Fenton? When compared address given Inspector Vance with forged note left for Bugs. Handwriting identical. But Mr. Chan didn't think that was evidence enough. So he had Mr. Percy send everyone on the test flight. Just so you'd convict yourself. Then he's the one who poisoned Mr. Kirby. What? Kirby dead too? Kirby? I didn't do it. I swear I didn't do it. No? Then who did? I can't tell you. I wrote the note, but I'm not guilty of murder. Sit down. I tell you, I swear. Now look. Drake is killed because he's investigating sabotage. Ramola is shot just when we're going to make him talk. Then Kirby gets knocked off so we won't know about the briefcase. And you say you're not guilty of murder? One moment, Inspector. Mr. Fenton telling truth. What? Merely carried out orders of real killer, Paul Narvo. You mean he's not Narvo? Master criminal known to be much younger. This man merely trusted confederate. Oh, so you know who Narvo really is then, huh? Well, we'll soon get that out of you. You better start talking, Fenton. You'll kill me if I tell you. These would suggest moments rest. Would someone kindly get Mr. Fenton a drink of water? Charlie, will you let me handle this my way? I'll take it, sir. Well, here you are, sir. One moment, please. What's the matter? Contains same poison that killed Mr. Kirby. Thank you so much, Mr. Narvo. Why, you... Desperate attempt to silence Mr. Fenton reveal you to be head of sabotage ring. Try to poison me, would you? Yes, he's Narvo, all right. How can he be Narvo? His own wife didn't recognize him. Mr. Narvo's countenance completely rebuilt through plastic surgery on account of serious automobile accident. Operation on throat, altered tone of voice. But inability to change fingerprints force him to have briefcase stolen. No doubt he planned to escape before a duplicate set of prints can be forwarded from Scotland Yard. But Mr. Fenton's arrest caused him to fear immediate exposure. So you made Narvo give himself away by letting him have a chance to poison Fenton? Charlie, I've got to hand it to you. Oh, this was an easy case, Inspector. You ought to be with us on a tough one sometime. Confidence of favorite son, like courage of small boy at dentist, most evident after tooth extracted.